Mainz in Money 2017 in London here, ladies and gentlemen. And with me here is now for the first time Panoro Minerals, a uh, yeah, copper developer in uh, working in Peru. And uh, we want to talk with Luke Shaheen, who is the CEO of the company. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, great to have you here. Fantastic. We love copper a lot because of e-mobility. I think it's uh, one of the top future markets. Mm -hmm. But maybe first elaborate a bit. What's your company doing? Where are you located? Sure. Um, we're 100% focused in Peru. We've been in Peru for over 20 years. Our uh, principal project is the Cochabamba's project, which is primarily a copper project, but it has some good gold and silver byproducts. Mm -hmm. We've been working on the Cochabamba's project for almost a decade now. We have completed some 70,000 meters of drilling over this period of time and have grown the resource from zero to over 700 million tons. Oops. And we have now completed a preliminary economic assessment showing that at $3 copper, the project has a $700 million valuation. Mm -hmm. And of course, copper now is above $3. Um, we have uh, a unique position in the southern part of Peru. Mm -hmm. In the copper business, it requires the movement of a lot of material, mm -hmm. which means that infrastructure is key. And in the southern part of Peru, between a privatized port, which has been expanded, a privatized railway which is expanding, mm -hmm. the construction of a new public road uh, designed to haul concentrate. It means that all of the major infrastructure is ready is in this part of wow. Peru as well. But that's so that means also around Cotabambas, uh, it's all there. I mean, you must maybe do a little bit, uh, let's call it the last mile upgrade, yeah? Right. But the rest is there. Yeah, we feel that the Cotabambas project, uh, we've done a 10-year marathon and that we're now into a one to two year sprint to the finish line. Okay. And uh, we're an exploration company. Our primary objective is to partner or sell the Cotabamba's project. Mm. And what we're working on right now is drilling to demonstrate that there's significant growth potential still at Cotabamba's additional components to a mine plan mm -hmm. that will add more value and uh, position ourselves well to find a partner or acquirer of the Cotabamba's project yeah. as the copper market continues towards what is probably a peak that's going to come maybe three, four years from now. Absolutely. No, that's for sure. And I think also copper is still again in the deficit and it will stay in the deficit uh, because uh, I said it before in some other interviews. I mean, uh, we had already a 70% increase this year from last year on e-mobility in the world. And this requires enormous amounts of right. copper for the future. And I think you are totally in the right, right. position. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at uh, copper in the longer term, um, electric vehicles uh, require about 100 kilograms of copper yep. and the world is headed towards 100 million vehicle sales a year which would mean 50% of the world's copper required for those electric vehicles. Yeah, yeah. So the longer term demand means that copper is going to be and remain a key commodity. Absolutely. And in the more medium term, mm -hmm. the new cycle has begun yeah. and very few companies have advanced projects to the level that we've been able to advance yeah. ours. So I think we should be able to get a good value for our shareholders. Definitely, definitely. And I mean, 700 million tons, that's amazing. That's an outstanding uh, resource. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the big boys are already interested in watching you very carefully. So let's, let's scale a bit back. What is the game plan for 2018? What do you want to achieve and do you have the money to achieve that? In 2018, we will be drilling, uh, continuing to drill four targets that are immediately adjacent to the existing proposed pit. Mm -hmm. And the objective with that drilling is to grow the resource, grow the near surface, higher grade resource, and grow the oxide resource. Mm -hmm. And then in, t in addition to those four targets in within what we call cluster one, we have made an application to expand our drill permit to include the area that we call cluster two. Mm -hmm. And within cluster two, we've identified a three kilometer long area where with SCARN mineralization. So in 2018, we'd like to step out into that area mm -hmm. and drill that area as well mm -hmm. in order to add more high grade mineralization mm -hmm. and demonstrate the significant upside to the Cotabamba's project. Fantastic. Great. And that money is funded. Mm -hmm. We have a streaming agreement with Wheaton Precious Metals which should provide us next year approximately $4 million. We have $5 million of warrants that are well within the money that are being exercised now. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to about nine. And we're looking at a strategic uh, divestiture of a non-core asset mm -hmm. that should bring in 
another few million dollars. So I expect to have at least 15 million dollars. Well, that's quite year. decent, I would say. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, can you give us maybe an idea? I know it's way too early, but a size of that project, if you would bring that input into production, do we talk about 100 million, 300 million, a billion? Uh, the capital cost for the Cotabamba's project in the PEA is estimated at 1.5 billion. Mm. That 1.5 billion puts Cotabamba's into the lower end of the capital cost for copper projects mm. in that region of Peru. The four most recent projects that have been built, Las Bambas was $7 billion, uh, Freeport's uh, Cerro Verde was $4.5 billion, um, Constancia was 1.8 billion and Antipicay was 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. So Cotabamba's is in the lower end uh, of the capital cost curve. It should produce um, at mining at 80,000 tons a day, produce 75,000 tons a year of copper. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, wow. And uh, can you say something to the, let's say, cost per pound? And do you have other metals associated, by the way? Do you have any byproducts? Right. As I mentioned, uh, the uh, project is 77% copper, but 20% of the value comes from gold mm -hmm. and 3% from silver. It's a nice waste to have. So it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice balance. There's yeah. some nice byproduct credits. Yeah. Those byproduct credits mean that the C1 cash cost is estimated at $1.22 per pound of copper. Wow. Which puts Cotabambas into the lower quartile mm -hmm. for new copper production. So Cotabambas will be a low cost producer. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the concentrate is clean. Mm -hmm. There's no arsenic. Oh, that's important. Yeah. So it will be a strategically located, low cost producer with a clean concentrate. That was a perfect final sentence. Thank you very much for that. And we keep fingers crossed and look forward to a nice update maybe at PDAC then. Very good, thank Great. you. Great, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Luke Shaheen, the CEO of Pano Minerals. And uh, you heard it, it's a really, really large copper project in Peru and Cotabambas with 700 million tons in the resource and also with gold and silver associated will be one of the real low cost producers in the future then. And uh, the PA is already there. Now they are going to work to upgrade the resource and uh, probably then on the pre feasibility in the future. And uh, yeah, they need definitely a strategic and a industry partner. And I think it's a fantastic project in one of the best mining regions in the world. So check it out and thanks for watching us. Bye bye from London.